So it goes without saying that 2020 has been an insane year. The stock market completely crashed and went back up in five months and now it's at all time highs. The world has been worried about their health all year long. Everything was shut down and we weren't allowed to do the basic things that we never would have thought that we wouldn't be allowed to do. And amidst all of that, people including myself felt the urge to start investing their money into certain things and trying to figure out different ways to actually make money. Now doing this while everything is going on can do a few things. You can either make good investments and make some good money on, on smart investments and, and well thought out decisions, or you can make bad investments when you don't do your research and you don't make a smart decision on what you're putting your money into. Now to touch on my own investment and my worst investment of 2020 and honestly my whole life, this investment leaned more towards the smart decision, but it was more or less in between. It wasn't a bad decision that I made and it wasn't necessarily a great decision and a well thought out decision that I made. If it were to lean towards one side, it would be more the good decision because everything was set out right. So my bad decision was actually buying a car at an auction and expecting to flip it for a couple thousand dollars extra, but instead I sold it for less than what I put into it. So what happened was my brother went to an auction. It was a public auction that sells vehicles or used vehicles. And he gave me a call and was like, hey man, there's a there's a Jeep here that's really, really clean, it's really nice, it's probably gonna go for a good price. I, I think you should pick it up and try to flip it if you want. And I said, okay, cool, send me some pictures. So he sent me some pictures. I checked out the Jeep, it was very, very clean. He told me exactly what it was, so I did a little bit of research on the Jeep. I looked it up on OfferUp and uh, Facebook Marketplace, so places that you can buy cars online. And I was seeing a lot of the same Jeep going for about five, six, seven grand, uh, with more miles on the Jeep, the Jeep, the Jeeps that I saw didn't, they weren't as nice as the one that I was going to buy, the one that I had the opportunity to buy. So I was checking them out. They were all going for a, pr a pretty good price. I figured I can get this Jeep fairly low, fairly, fairly cheap for that specific Jeep. So I said, okay, cool. I told him, hey, bid on it, see what it's at, let me know, and uh, maybe I'll get it. So we ended up winning the bid and we got the Jeep for $3,950. So $3,950 is what I paid for that Jeep. So my thought process behind this was, awesome, okay, I got I got it for under four grand. I think I could sell it for at least six, maybe, maybe seven, because it was a lot nicer than the ones I found online. A lot of the ones online weren't as nice and they had more miles and they were going for anywhere from six, seven grand, like I said. So I figured this was gonna be a good investment if everything checked out all right. It'd be great, I'm gonna be probably make two grand on it, hopefully um, at least $1,000. I was guaranteed, I, I guaranteed that I, I was gonna make $1,000 at least on this deal. Now I have to note, when you buy these vehicles from these auctions, you can't test drive them. You can see them, check them out, get inside, you can start them, you can hear them run, but you can't test drive them. So it's a little bit different of you know buying a car and the experience of buying a car. Because usually when you buy a car, you test drive it, you get a feel for it, you see exactly how everything works. But with these auctions, you only get so much time to look at them and you can't test drive them, so you don't really know everything behind the vehicle. But it's a little bit of a give and take because when you purchase these vehicles, you buy them a lot less than what they would retail for online or from a private owner. So I took the risk, I bought the car, and like I said, I picked it up for just under $4,000. I went to the auction, I paid for the car, and was gonna take it home. So I went to go, went to the car, and was checking it out. I didn't really see the car when I bought it because like I said, my brother was at the auction and I wasn't there, I was working at the time, so I couldn't go in and check it out. And we kinda had to make a split decision. So once I actually bought the car, went in, checked it out, I started it up, was looking all around the car, looking inside, just checking out what I just bought. I started it up, let it run for about 15 minutes, and then it died. So out of random, the car just died. It, it, it just shut off and it wasn't running anymore. I said, okay, that's kind of weird. Maybe it was just like a fluke or something. So started it back up, let it run. After about 10, 15 seconds, it died out again. So me knowing a little bit about cars and you know, kind of being in the automotive industry for so long, I kind of just was tinkering around with it at the auction. I didn't even get it up and drive and drive it away. So I was kind of tinkering around with it, trying to figure out why was this happening? You know, there's, there's various reasons why something like that could happen. Long story short, I couldn't really figure it out on the spot there. So what I did was I told the, the auction, I said, hey, I just bought this car. Can you guys tow it to my house so I can, you know, get a better, get a better understanding of what's going on, just check it out, spend a little bit of time on it. So I ended up getting the car towed to my house and spent a little bit of time trying to figure out what exactly was wrong with it. 
And long story short, I couldn't figure it out. I didn't, had no idea what was going on. It was a weird, weird issue that was just dying. So I had my theories behind it, but I couldn't figure it out. And I needed certain tools to try to, you know, pinpoint the, act, the actual problem with the car. So I messaged my friend. I told him about what was going on. He said, okay, bring it over. We'll look at it. So I had to get it towed over to the dealership he's working at and have him check it out. I dropped it off to him for a few days. He tried to figure out what was going on. We threw a couple parts at it that, you know, we really weren't sure was gonna fix it or not. Ended up not working. I spent a little bit of money there and ended up landing on a pretty big part, pretty expensive part that we were pretty confident that was the issue. So I ended up buying that part. I spent about $500 on that part, put it in and it fixed the issue. So I said, okay, great. I put a little bit of money into it. I fixed the issue. Now it's running fine. I'm still good. I still think I can make some money on it. So I said, okay, great. Let's, uh, let's drive it. Let's get it. Let's get it looking nice. Let's clean it up. And we're going to, you know, put it up for sale. Clearly before I could start driving it, I needed to register it. It was out of registration. It was expired and I had to put it in my name. So I did all of that. I spent about $500 extra on that. There was some hidden fees in there that I didn't know about and that's kind of the risk that you take when you buy cars from auctions. You don't really know about the certain fees that you have to pay. So it's kind of the risk that you want to take, but essentially I got it legal. I got everything, you know, straight onto it to where I can drive it and actually be able to sell it. So I was getting closer to the point where I was able to sell it. So at this point, I put about $1,000 into the car trying to fix all the issues, get it legal and get it ready to sell. But at that point, I was already that much into it. I wanted to try to maximize my profits when I did sell it. So what I wanted to do was put new tires on it because that's a good selling point when you're selling a vehicle. And I also wanted to put a leveling kit on it. So what a leveling kit is, is to pretty much level out the car. It was kind of a stink bug looking car. So I wanted to level it out, make it look like a truck, make it look very presentable, nice. So when I do throw it up for sale, people are gonna look at it and be like, oh, that's a really nice Jeep. So I bought the tires. I bought the leveling kit that all totaled into about a thousand dollars so at this point now i'm six thousand dollars into this jeep remember i bought it for four thousand i put about two thousand dollars worth of upgrades and fixing little things here and there and now i'm at about six thousand dollars so okay i told myself you know i'm in it a lot of money this is a pretty big investment at this point i wasn't expecting all of this but i still think i can get about eight grand for it maybe nine uh, but I think I could get about eight grand. So I knew I was gonna make about $2,000, but that wasn't the case. So after I got everything done, I got it perfect. It was driving great. I was driving it around a little bit just to enjoy everything that I put into it. I knew I had a lot of money into it. I wanted to get a little bit of enjoyment out of it before I put it up for sale and I put it up for sale. So what I was doing was I was driving it a little bit just to feel everything, just to kind of enjoy it, right? And I got in it, I drove about 10 miles to my uncle's house for a birthday party, drove it there, parked it, and when, when I parked it, I parked it kind of on like a slant, so I was kind of on a, li a little bit of a hill. Went to the party, enjoyed myself, came back out, started the car, and it ran really rough and then died. So at this point, I'm stressing, I I'm mad, I, I just, I'm, I'm hating life right now, and I tried to start it again, it started, ran really, really rough and died. And then tried to start it again, it wouldn't start. Couldn't figure out, I was like, what the heck is going on? So I checked the oil. The oil was a little bit low, but nothing too crazy. And got in it again, started it, got it started, and then it started knocking. So it started making a really loud noise. So at this point, I had the suspicion that the engine was bad. And long story short, I got the car towed to my house, checked it out, got a couple of opinions, and it ended up being that the engine pretty much blew up. It uh, spun a rod bearing, which means pretty much the engine is trash. So I basically needed to buy a new engine and put it in and then sell it, or just get rid of it as it is and take a loss. So I weighed my options. I did some research on engines. I tried to find an engine for a good price that I can put into the car to where I could at least get my money back, maybe profit, but probably not. If anything, I would have probably lost money if I put an engine in it. So I had another option of just throwing it up for sale at a discounted price and leaving that problem to someone else that wanted to actually put an engine in it and get it at a good price to where it would be a good investment for them. So after about two months of having it up for sale with a blown up engine, it didn't run, it needed to be towed out of my house, I ended up selling the car. And I sold the car for, oh man, I can't believe this happened. 
I sold the car for $3,300. Now, although I'm grateful that I got some of my money back, it still hurt really, really bad that I lost about $2,700 on that deal. $2,700 is a lot of money to lose all within a span of about three months. But I'm also happy that that project is out of my life. I don't have to worry about it anymore. And I just gotta take the loss, take the punch and, uh, and walk away with it. So when I said that this investment kind of leaned towards more of the, the smart investment and a good investment to do is because I know a little bit about cars. I've actually flipped cars before and it's kind of like industry that I'm kind of comfortable with putting my money into and have a little bit of knowledge about what I can make on deals. But what happened was a freak accident. It just, the deal kind of went sour and uh, the engine blew up, really not at any of my own fault. So it wasn't really a bad decision to make, but when you're working with cars, it is kind of a risky decision because you never know what you're going to buy, especially from an auction. If you buy from, from an auction, you don't really know anything about the car. So it's more or less in the middle. If it were to lean towards one side, it'd be more of a smart investment in my honest opinion. But at the end of the day, it was a bad investment and I lost a lot of money on it. So that is my worst investment of 2020. Uh, actually, my probably my worst investment of my entire life because I lost so much money on it. And I really have to try to forget about that investment and forget about the money I lost because it has been bugging me ever since it happened. At the time, I was very, very bummed out about it because it was such a nice nice Jeep. I, I really liked it. I kind of wanted to keep it, but I had so much money into it that I, it wasn't smart to keep. And it, it just bummed me out that that happened. It, it wasn't necessarily my fault and it was just bad luck really. So I'm gonna forgive and forget and move on to the next investment. So if you enjoy my, my pain stories and the bad things that happened to me, definitely consider subscribing to the channel, like this video, give it a thumbs up, please. It'll definitely help me out, especially as I'm growing on YouTube. And if you like this kind of content, put it in the comments. Let me know what you, what you like and what you wanna see from me. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one, later.